Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Q&A. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our Chief Market Analyst. I'm Eric Griffin, President of ITM Trading. For those of you who don't know or are tuning in for the first time, we take your questions submitted to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. We put them up on the screen. We ask them live so you get a real, true, spontaneous, organic response. And uh, today, Lynette is at her, she's a little under the weather, so she's up at her bug outlook. We are on Zoom doing that, or Skype. Zoom or Skype? Zoom. Zoom. And, uh, but yes. Lynette, you, you had one, you sent me in a text this morning with a little recording that you wanted me to play before we started, before we did the Q and A. And so you want to give people a little context and I'll pull that up. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's critical what's happening. And one of the questions that, you know, I've talked, uh, I've asked over and over again is how much pain will the central banks allow before they do a pivot? And you might notice how much the markets are up today. And that is because the Bank of England did a huge pivot. Um, yesterday, if you haven't seen the piece that I did yesterday, I would say that that is the single important piece that I've done to date. Are told over and over is the safest thing that you can do is not acting like that. So um, Edgar, would you play that clip? And then maybe we can talk a little bit more afterwards, please. I got it. It's on my phone. What are you going to do that? Well, you've, so you've obviously seen them move back to QE, which is a very powerful weapon in G7 uh, economies where you're printing your own currency. It's obviously not the direction they want to go in longer term to get inflation under control, but in the short run, they can always pull that lever and get markets back in order. It, it seems slightly odd that we're in a situation where the market is saying you need to raise rates aggressively, but the bank is responding with QE. <laughs> are, are those two things compatible? Uh, there's, there's definitely a tension there, to put it mildly. I think okay. it's, it's about time frames. The moves that we were seeing over the past few days, they are simply too dramatic for a central bank to tolerate. They have. Could you hear it, Lynette? No, I couldn't. I couldn't hear the clip at all. But I um, mean, really, what we're seeing is the central banks losing control. The government bond market now, not the gilt but the U.S. Treasury market, which has also been behaving very <coughs> disorderly. When any markets behave disorderly, you know, then the central bankers are going to rush in to calm those markets with QE, with money printing, at the same time that they're raising rates. So, I mean, what we're really witnessing in real time are central bankers losing control of these markets and I mean, this next, this, this pivot, if it then the markets are really happy because they've now seen at what level of pain the central bankers will then turn around and start dumping lots more money into the system. Now, they don't want to call it QE because after all, QE was about um, lifting rising inflation levels. And of course, that's not the goal of this. And this is what people really need to understand. All of these markets are so highly inflated and it makes your retirement and fiat money products look better when you open your statement and your statement at least looks okay or goes up. And so presumably the Bank of England did this to save the pension plans, but really it's to postpone the implosion of the system. So for people that are out there that are counting on, uh, you know, on their, their pension or their 401ks, which you're having a much harder time getting your money out of, or your IRAs, you know, you're going to be feeling this soon unless they turn around and just completely, you know, kill whatever little bit of confidence is left the dollar. And that in this country, the dollar, but this is a crisis of confidence in the currencies. And the fact that it's Bank of England, which is an advanced economy and part of the G7, and, and a lot of the G7 is now starting to pivot. This is huge people, huge, huge, huge. I don't know how to stress it more than that. This is the, everybody says, what do you look for? What's unfolding right now is what I'm looking for because this is the bedrock, government bonds, especially of the G7, particularly of the US. 
is the bedrock of the global financial system and it is crumbling before our eyes. This isn't something that's going to happen. This is something that's happening in real time right now. And it should, I'm telling right now, it scares the crap out of me. How do you think they, how do you think they fight anybody. it? They can't. They, it, all of the things that they have done with all of this manipulation, particularly since 2008, you know, has absolutely given them no choices. And the, the, the nosebleed level of the balance sheet, can that balance sheet go higher? Yep, and you're about to see it go to the moon on a Lorna Doom. I mean, the, 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 I'm almost speechless watching the sovereign markets crumble, the sovereign debt, the government debt markets crumble. So no matter what happens right now, because can they prop these markets up? Sure, well, Bank of England just went in and bought a tremendous amount of uh, government bonds, the 30 years, to try and stabilize that market. But what you need to understand is that's going to absolutely impact the inflation because when they print that money, all the money that's out there already. So here they're raising rates to fight inflation and here they're now back at QE. Don't call it QE, but it is QE because they're out of tools. They're out of tools. Get to shelter. Uh, I'm just saying. <clears throat> all right. Well, We'll go, we'll move to the questions. I can tell how passionate you are about that one. Um, Trent J asks, how is the US going to pay off all of its debt? Don't we have, don't we have to do this prior to the reset? Oh no, that is what the reset is actually. It's resetting all of that debt to zero, but at the same time, it also resets all of their money to zero. So uh, no, that that is the reset is uh, an advanced economy, well, global economy now, getting rid of all of those mountains of debt because the whole system's built on debt. And this debt is not payable. It's not just unsustainable. That's what they like to say. It hasn't been payable in a very long time. That's why you just see it going up and up and up. And now it's going up and up and up in a higher and higher interest rate environment. The central banks are making error after error after error because they are not gods. They are human beings. They are fallible and they live in a world of theory. They don't live in a world of real life. And their theories are wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Why does anybody listen to them? Tell us how you really feel. Pardon me? Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> So the next question kind of rolls right into that. And, and Johnny P asks, can you explain what inflating the debt away means? Okay, yes, it means that if you take out the debt and the dollar has a purchasing power um, that it can buy X, right? And then as inflation erodes that purchasing power, it, you know, the dollar, well, right now, look at how we have the strongest currency in the world except we also have extremely high inflation in anything that you buy. So that means that the purchasing power value of the dollar is going down, down, down by, by um, design. And therefore, when you pay off debt, you're using less valuable dollars to do so. So going into hyperinflation, those dollars have absolutely zero value. So it's easy for them to just print, print the money to repay the debt. If you or I did it, that's counterfeiting. Well, guess what? Even when the central banks and the governments do that, it's also counterfeiting because only gold is real money. Everything else is credit. Right, I think that's and why we have to get to a reset environment because even hyperinflating, it makes the old debt easy to pay or easier to pay, but the new debt more expensive, right? So yeah, but you, eventually I mean, you have to reset it. Away, if, if you're, <clears throat> when you get to the level of hyperinflation, it's the speed of that inflation. So if you take out debt today and the dollar loses, you know, 5%, 10%, then you're repaying it with dollars that are five or 10% less valuable. So, you know, it, it's a big conundrum, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And they're gonna take on more debt 
because that's how they create more dollars in the system. And the problem that we're facing is in liquidity, which we've talked about quite a bit over the years on our channel. And liquidity is a couple things. Number one, like we just saw in the UK where uh, the banks have withdrawn a whole bunch of mortgage products. And Eric, you might remember that because you were doing mortgages back in 2008, right? And all of a sudden you had people lined up for mortgages and boom, those products were withdrawn. Well, what did those people do then? So we're already seeing that in the mortgage market in the UK and you know, coming to a theater near you. So liquidity is your ability to have, a, you know, either have the ability to borrow, which is what's happening a lot in the derivative market right now, because that is a ticking time bomb and it has been even Warren Buffett who I'm not really a fan, but he called them weapons of mass financial destruction. Yup. And so right now in the energy markets, particularly, um, and I, I just did a piece on this. Was that, okay, that's going out tomorrow um, on how energy is really being priced. But you know what? You can put real estate in there. You can put any commodity that you want in that because what's really moving these markets is not supply and demand. It is speculation. All of these markets in the financialization, turning everything, everything, everything into a financial product so that it can easily be traded means, and, and I've shown you that VIX, uh, that VIX graph that they don't even publish anymore on the 10 year treasuries. You can see when it was handed over to the traders. Absolutely see it. It's so obvious. Edgar, maybe you can pull that up and you know put that in the blog or something on this. Um, so if if everything that it, it, we don't we live in the real world, right? This is a house that's you know surrounds me. It's real. But Wall Street has turned anything that's real into a trading product product, and they are trading. That is, I mean, remember when oil went minus $37 a barrel, right? W was that real? No, it was trading. It was derivatives. Traders only care about the trade. They don't care about stability. They don't care about you. They care about making money and the trade. So, you know, if you're counting on any of these things to be supply demand driven, we're real, forget it, because it's just not, that's not the reality today. And all of this garbage has to be burned off in order to go into the new system, because this system is used up. And that's why we're seeing all of this. This is a currency life cycle issue. The, like, you know, when I'm 99, I'm gonna be different than I am here at almost 68, than my grandson is at nine. So, you know, just, just keep that in mind. This doesn't go on forever. We are at the end of the can kicking, the end. All right, so, hey, Edgar, can you scroll down? Give me the last question there. Yeah, I'm all fired up today because, yeah, I mean, th this is a major pivot. This is a major, 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 major thing that's happening right now. All right, so Terry C. asks, Lynette has often talked about an overnight financial reset. Why are assets such as checking and savings accounts devalued, but not outstanding debt? Are retirement accounts such as IRAs, 401ks also subject to the same devaluation? Well, yeah. And, and look at these, look at these markets and look what the bank of England just did uh, because of the retirement plans. Because if you open up your statement and it looks bad, you're unhappy. You start, it's like when inflation runs really rapidly, you notice. If it stays low at 2%, you don't notice that much. But when it's up at 8, 10, 12, 20, 50%, you notice these things. And so, you know, they've really locked themselves in. They have to do an overnight reset. But Chances are pretty good. Okay, this is this is what I think is going to happen. We're going to have a pivot. Lots of free money, it's like in Venezuela. Lots of free money goes into these fiat money products 
so that that nominal confusion, you're looking at the number and the number looks good, but in reality, what you can buy with that currency is less and less and less. So when everybody loses confidence and they see a loaf of bread at $85,000, right? What are they gonna do? They're gonna lop off zeros to give you the illusion that they have solved the problem, but everything else resets at that lower level too. They don't change behavior because they can't change behavior until every bit of confidence is lost. That's why I don't know how many overnight revaluations we're gonna end up having. On average, it's three but it could be five or it could be two. It really depends when the population just, they don't care about the revaluations anymore because they really don't help and they get it that they really don't help. But will we see a higher stock market? I think so. So does that mean that you should rush out and buy stocks? Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Because the, the stocks are denominated in the currency that they are rapidly devaluing. And I've said this so many times, probably a trillion by now, a trillion times zero is zero. That's why you gotta have physical gold and silver because it's the only thing that's really outside of the system and runs no counterparty risk. You buy a stock, you buy a bond, you buy an annuity, you buy any of that garbage. You have a pension plan, you have a 401k, you have an IRA. All of that, or most of that anyway, is denominated in dollar denominated assets and the dollar's going away. It's just that simple. Maybe they'll keep the name because that's what they always do. So you go, oh, see the dollar didn't go away. Look at this, it survived. But we used to have a gold dollar we had a debt-based dollar. Now we're going to have a CBD dollar. Yeah, that's good. Central bank digital currency. Let's call that a digital dollar. Yeah, we still have the dollar in name only. It's going to be different. And if you don't have real money to convert into the new iteration that's coming up, and for them to say that they're not really sure if they're going to do a CBD I think that is garbage. I think everything is in place for it. And I think we are very, very, very close. And it'll be sold as fixing things. And it is, it's just the next iteration to steal your principal and get control, complete control of your life. Yeah, no. Did I answer the question? I think so. I think people can tell that you're fired up. Are, are you feeling like a up. higher level like of concern right now than normal or? What? Are you have, are you feeling, sorry, we're in this, you're there and I'm here. Uh, are you feeling like you're having a higher level of concern than normal? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, really it started a little bit on Friday and, and so, you know, it escalated yesterday. And honestly, I mean, this pivot by the Bank of England, we see how much pain yeah. that a G7 country is willing to tolerate because they know if those pensioners and those people with retirement plans, they're already very unhappy, right? This is going to make it that much worse. And the dollar, the strong dollar, stronger against every currency, it's just relative. It's garbage. If your dollar buys less and less, how strong is it? Yeah, I am fired up. I'm sorry. No. Can't help it. It's good. So people want to know. People want to know how you really feel, right? So it's important. Um, I mean... We all rely on you because you you research this stuff and in depth and you're buried in it all the time. And so that's why these questions are important. So Jake P asks, yeah. if you had to put a value on gold and silver after the crash in today's de dollar denomination, what would it be? I think you're probably asking me two different things here. So I'm gonna answer that in two different ways. Okay, number one, and I haven't done the calculation recently, 
So I know it's higher than this, but the true fundamental value where they do the reset today is probably somewhere, I well, I know for sure it's north of $15,000, probably way north of that, if we actually knew all of the debt. Yeah, so based upon they, your you know, normal, just real quick, based upon your normal calculations, not including all the debt, but it was, it was I think it was, the other day it was like 12,500 something. Okay. So that is it in, in nominal terms, but the whole, the most important function of gold is to hold your purchasing power over time. So if you could buy a suit of armor a thousand years ago with one ounce of gold, and you could buy a suit, a really nice suit in 1900 for $20 or one ounce of gold. On the other side of this, you should also be able to buy that men's suit. And you can still do it even at the level of 16, you know, 65. And I don't buy men's clothing. Can you get a decent suit for oh, that, yeah. Eric? For sure. Okay. So the whole point of the most important point of gold is to hold your purchasing power over time. Whatever that new nominal number is for the new currency. But you see, we also have a huge advantage right now. And that is a rising gold price indicates a failing currency, and they don't want you to know that the currency is failing. So, you know, in theory, and this is just a theory, you've got gold money over here, and you've got and you've got the government-based fiat money here. So it's really, if they're both money, you got good and you got garbage. And so in theory, and that's what you're seeing because these are just spot contracts, it's not real gold. What you're seeing is, is the dollar getting stronger, gold getting weaker. But the reality is, is you're not seeing the dollar getting stronger because the inflation tells you how much weaker the real dollar is, right? So, you know, you have to look at the whole thing. So when you ask me, well, how much is it gonna be in nominal terms? First of all, not there is no person that's going to know how big a devaluation is going to be. You know, they could do, and it, it really is going to be based upon the level of debt that needs to be paid off, right? Paid off so everything gets reset, like we were talking about earlier. That number could be twenty trillion, for all I know, by the time they do it. But, it, but the number is irrelevant. Right. I like the way that you said that because that's important to understand. It's that it has a value. It has a purchasing power now, and that purchasing power should hold regardless of what the actual nominal dollar amount is, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you don't buy gold and silver as a trade. You buy gold and silver as insurance to make sure, but we do have some opportunities because it is so suppressed. It's, it's like a spring, right? You hold your hand on a spring, and then when you release it, that spring is gonna shoot in a direction. Nominally, whatever that number is, is what that number is, but we have that opportunity to actually increase our wealth because of that suppression. So you take advantage of it. Yeah, and, that's and what central bankers are doing. They're taking advantage of what they're creating here. Even if even if it wasn't like a spring and it was it wasn't suppressed, right? Let's just say we took that off the table because okay. other assets are gonna are gonna drop so much during hyperinflation while gold holds. E even then, you have opportunities, even without it being a spring, right? Yes. So but it's a we, win. We it's a win either who, way. <clears throat> correct. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Eric. And we also have to see what fiat money products are actually going to survive. I don't think many will. I think, you know, hyperinflation is about burning out the garbage. And there's so much garbage in the system right now because it's all trading, it's all Wall Street trading. It's hard for people to understand, but why would you risk your wealth with a Wall Street trader? It doesn't matter whether or not that's your perception. All right, well, that's all the questions we have for today. Probably have some lives, but Edgar, you can send those lives to me and I'll look at them for next week. Yep. But we're, we're at 25 minutes, so.
I'm sorry, guys, but I mean, you need to know this is why you tune in. This is why you subscribe. And, and I'm telling you, get to safety, get to safety, you know, and safety is food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Get your real money. You got to have it. They're destroying what you're working for and what you're trying to save. Anything else you want to say? Got anything coming up that's important? Ah, well, if you haven't watched the video that I did yesterday on what's happening in the bond mark, market, absolutely 100% go ahead and, and make sure that you watch that. The video that's coming out tomorrow is on how energy is really priced, but the reality is you could just put any asset that you want into that because I go into that in a lot more detail. Then um, today I did, I think probably the best interview that I've ever done. And it's not because of me, it's because of my guest, um, Alejandro, who lived through the uh, hyperinflation in Venezuela, and he still has family there. So, I mean, this information, and he had, he had uh, great grandparents or whatever it was, family members that were uh, escaped from Italy with their gold and silver in World War II and then established their home in Venezuela. This interview was so interesting. I, I think it's gonna end up being a three-parter because we talked for, God, more than an hour and a half. I mean, and I probably could have stayed on with him for another hour and a half. I'm gonna have to have him back. It, it was amazing. And I think it's, we'll let you know when we're gonna release that. Um, but I think that is, uh, really critical for people to hear because one of the things that he said that I thought was so interesting was, you know, he escaped from Venezuela and came to the U S because the perception is that the dollar is real stable and strong and that, you know, something like what happened in Venezuela could never happen in the U S but he is seeing all the signs that he remembers from Venezuela is indeed happening in the U.S. That's a really important message. So we have we have a lot of good, and also Marjorie Wildcraft. We had a great conversation with her because she's just been through Fiona, in you know in Puerto Rico, and so her experience doesn't matter why a crisis happens. The importance of having everything that you need and being as independent and self sufficient in. in as many ways as you possibly can, and, and particularly inside of a community. I mean, she really brought that up and hammered that home. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming up on our cha channel between Beyond Gold and Silver and ITM Trading. You know, we, we really are trying to give you every heads up and every tool and every everything, putting you in a position that puts your best interest first. So yeah, Eric, yeah, there's lots coming up. All right, well, that's all we have for today. Okay, thank you so much, you guys. And please remember that, you know, it is so time for you to cover all of your assets. There is no more time to procrastinate. I don't know when this thing is gonna happen, but I do not like what I am seeing. And until next we meet, Please be safe out there. Bye-bye.